Hello, everybody. Today, we need to talk about EU commissioners and what their role is in shaping policy in Europe and how this can influence nuclear. And, and, and the trouble with these EU commissioners is that we tend to select the wrong people for the position. Uh, currently in this picture, what you see is Franz Timmermans all the way to the right. Then uh, next to him, you get Teresa Ribera who is uh, from Spain, and then in the middle, or in the middle of the, the frame, you get uh, Dan Jurgensen. He is from, uh, from, from Denmark. So let's see what's in the news. Uh, the EU considers two anti-nuclear politicians as commissioners with energy in their portfolio. Now, Teresa Ribera is pegged as uh, the, 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 basically the, the energy commissioner. And then Jurgensen, he has to do, he has something to do with housing. Uh, but this uh, tangentially also, uh, basically, uh, it, it is adjacent to nuclear somehow. So he gets to say things about nuclear as well. So first, Teresa Ribera, um, this is this is really, uh, uh, I think, a dangerous woman, especially to uh, to to come close to this position, uh, because she actually negotiated the nuclear exit deal in Spain. Uh, Spain plans to exit, by law, uh, nuclear in 2035. Uh, and, and obviously, if you've been following this, this channel, if you, uh, you know that I'm uh, very pro-nuclear. I think that nuclear is actually uh, a necessity, not just to, to, to make sure that you have a stable economy, but also, in the end, if at all, if at all possible, uh, to stave off the worst effects of climate change, or at least to adapt to them. Now, this Teresa Ribera person obviously thinks differently. She believes that Spain can be run uh, on renewables alone. And what she did was, uh, once, once she got involved in, in European affairs, uh, was that she fought tooth and nail to keep nuclear out of the EU sustainable taxonomy. And the EU sustainable taxonomy is uh, a taxonomy which uh, basically, basically classifies certain uh, technologies as being sustainable or not. And when your technology is not sustainable, you can't get sustainable finance for it. So this is a really big deal. Now, luckily, nuclear got into the EU sustainable taxonomy and has been uh, has been uh, made uh, sustainable. Now, Dan Jurgensen, a uh, similar, uh, similar character, he has been uh, making sure that Denmark doesn't do anything, nu anything related to nuclear. Uh, he, he keeps uh, pontificating that nuclear is not necessary to run the Danish economy. Now, personally, I, I've looked into the Danish electricity system and I believe that they absolutely can use nuclear because they have... Uh, they, they still use a lot of fossil fuels. They also have a lot of wind. And the trouble with Denmark is that if they want to rely as much on wind as they are planning to do, uh, another country will always have to bail them out when the wind isn't there. So the same for Dan Jurgensen here. He fought also tooth and nail uh, to keep nuclear out of the EU sustainable technology. Te taxonomy uh, and, and this is interesting because he said that his main task as a commissioner would be to be a mediator for compromises on nuclear power now let's think about it a mediator so is he is he mediating on behalf of the people who are against nuclear while he is a commissioner and what kind of compromises are we talking about now listen nuclear will become more compromised when he becomes a commissioner for the EU Commission. Now, Ursula von der Leyen, she has become far more pro-nuclear over the time. This is a quote, a literal quote, quote from her, uh, saying that Europe needs more renewables, more nuclear and more efficiency, uh, which is something I agree. Uh, by the way, I, I would like that there to be more efficient more efficiency, not for the sake of using less electricity and less energy, but to actually keep using electricity and energy. But you know, we can we can enjoy the services or the goods or whatever we 
we do with that energy more. Uh, so so uh, I'm in favor of more use and that efficiency helps us use uh, stuff more instead of less. Now, why is this whole news relevant, right? I've been, been talking about it now for a minute or two. And the EU has a big influence in shaping energy landscape of its member states. So if you are, let's say you're the Netherlands, my country, and you want to build a nuclear power plant and you want to have sustainable finance for that, uh, if you would want to do that uh, unilaterally, so you say, okay, Europe, we don't care what you think. We're going to, uh, we are going to uh, finance our uh, new nuclear power plants using green bonds or or whatever sustainable financing tool that you can use. Then Europe can actually say, but hey, listen, we have this uh, these sets of rules, and you're not adhering to those rules, so we are going to punish you for that. So so. Europe really has a lot of power uh, when it comes to these things. So if you're an EU member, an EU member state, uh, and you want, to, you want to shape your energy system, um, you know, you do that in accordance to EU mandates. And these EU mandates, they set common goals for renewable energy, for emission reductions, for energy efficiency, uh, and they also say, okay, listen, there's some leeway here. You don't have to have exactly 25% uh, of wind and 25% of solar, and then you're all right. So how you basically build your system, that's up to you. But within this set of rules that there are, so for instance, if you want to do green financing and nuclear isn't in there, you can't do green financing for nuclear. Now, the mandates, are, those are an interesting thing because a, a mandate basically means that you, you have to do that. So by 2030, the renewable mandate is 42.5%. Uh, so 42.5% of energy, not just electricity. I believe that it's energy. If it's electricity, then it's, uh, I mean, it's attainable. But if it's energy, then it's going to be a tough job. Now, for 20, for nuclear, there are no mandates at all. And, and I mean, at this moment, people would say, well, yeah, it's logical because some countries don't want nuclear. But what if you are a country that doesn't want renewables or doesn't need renewables? Let's consider France, for instance. France gets 65% of its electricity out of nuclear. So why the hell would they offer up 2.5% of their, their nuclear uh, fleet in order to get, uh, oh, it's not even 2.5%, it's 7.5%, in order to get, you know, oh, it's even more, <laughs> it's even more, it's, 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 it's 10, 12 and a half percent. It, why would they have to give up the 12 and a half percent portion of nuclear capacity in order to make sure that renewables get their 42.5 percent? It just doesn't make any sense. So one of the, one of the proposed changes is that the renewable mandate uh, will get a nuclear inclusion in it. So why is this still relevant? So the EU commissioners, they formulate policies, enforce EU laws, and represent European interests in their specific portfolio. So this, I mean, they, they basically propose the, the mandates. So they say, okay, it would be smart if we would do a 42.5% a mandate of renewables by 2030. That's a proposal that comes from an EU commissioner. Now the problem is if you select one of these two characters that I've that we've that we've introduced at the beginning of this video, then you basically this is the Trojan horse in essence. So what you you, you get back you get these people coming into your you know your policy making environment, and, and these people can basically say, okay, you know what, uh, we are going to frustrate the hell out of everything that you want to do. So the trouble with the EU so far. And this is partly thanks to Frans Timmermans, who was EU commissioner uh, before he went back to Dutch politics, where he again started spouting his regular old anti-nuclear rhetoric. Believe me, these people don't change, even if they promise that they want to change before that they get into office. So thanks to Frans Timmermans, what we had is a dogmatic view on renewables. That's why we have the mandate. Uh, and nuclear was kept off the table deliberately as long as possible. 
he was i mean if he would have to hold his breath for five more minutes he would have done it if it kept nuclear off the table and worst of all, what they did was they bunched it together with gas. So they said, okay, uh, we are going to look at nuclear, consider nuclear, together with gas at the same time, and we're going to treat them as one, right? Which is obviously a nice way of making sure that nuclear never gets in if you can, get, if you can have your way. Now, all of that is changing currently. Energy reality is setting in. A lot of countries are seeing what, you know, the disaster that is, for instance, Germany's energy policy. They also see that it isn't working in other places. They are investing heavily in renewables. Everybody's investing heavily in renewables. And there are plenty of governments out there with smart people who say, okay, listen, uh, listen, minister, uh, we have to do this renewable exercise, but whatever we try to do in our modeling, we can't make it work. Now in the Netherlands, it's, it's slightly different because I have some, I, I know some people here, and, and some of these people say, listen, people at, 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 at governments, they just want to make sure that the minister is happy. So if we ask a consultancy firm to, you know, check whether something is possible, we basically ask, model it in such a way that it is possible. And this happens in a lot of countries. This probably happens in Germany. This probably probably happens in the Netherlands. This probably happens in Denmark. Wouldn't surprise me if it happened in Spain uh, or in Portugal. You know, all these anti-renewable, hold, anti-nuclear holdouts, like Austria also, these people, they are manipulating stuff so badly that they... they this is a form of cognitive dissonance. They're basically pulling, you know, putting their their fingers in their in their, in their ears, and they're saying la 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 la. I don't want to see reality. I am I, I am I am rejecting reality, and I'm substituting my own in there. You know the Adam Savage, um, the Adam Adam Savage quote. So what you see right now, a couple of countries don't do that. A couple of countries are smart. They are like, listen, this works, this doesn't work. We need more nuclear. And, and so you get France, you get the Netherlands, you get a couple of other, other countries. Poland, for instance, uh, Sweden is in it. Uh, they say, listen, we need nuclear. So they are basically doing this bottom up. They're lobbying for uh, getting nuclear, all the benefits that renewables also have in order to make sure uh, that we can actually get to a sustainable future. Now, if we look at what is happening in the EU, this is absolutely warranted because uh, France is currently, has currently 16 new EPRs planned. Sweden has proposed 10 gigawatts of large and small reactors, and they have a, uh, a, a, a private company called uh, Careful Next, and they are working on the business case for the BWRX300, which is a small light water reactor. Now, Poland, they are, uh, they are doing uh, the civil works for the AP1000, three, three of them, and there is large private interest for BWRX300. They want to build, I believe, 26 units of those. The Netherlands has a proposed uh, four large units, Bulgaria, Four large, uh, two large unit, units. The Czech Republic seems to go with four EPR one thousands, which is a, 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 a toned down version of the EPR fourteen hundred. Hungary still wants to build two large reactors, although those are a Russian make, so there might be some problems there. And Romania has ordered two new can do reactors. Now, if I take the map of Europe. Right, so what we see is, uh, 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 I basically made Norway orange and Portugal and Spain orange as well, Ireland as well, because there's still a, a lot that can happen over there. Um, Italy is turning green. They want to have a new nuclear reactors that has been announced uh, pretty firmly. Uh, Belgium is still uh, on the way to the nuclear exit. In that regard, Spain should be made red as well. Uh, Germany and Austria and Luxembourg, they are really the anti-nuclear holdouts at this moment. Although in Denmark, a couple of people are working on getting more acceptance for nuclear there. So when we make a map of of, of, of Europe, we see overwhelmingly pro-nuclear uh, sentiments uh, compared to anti-nuclear sentiments. So, 
uh, getting back to these two candidates, if they get selected, what we get is a no proactive, no pro nuclear policies. So basically, you know, whatever momentum nuclear had, that's the momentum that it that it that it has to to roll on to or, or to basically move on on. Uh, but unfortunately, there will not there will not come any more energy to build more momentum. Uh, I, I don't, and if, if, if these people get, get selected, I even see that they may even try to hold the nuclear industry back and sabotage uh, whatever they can do at the commission level. So what you get then is what we've seen during the von Stimmelmann's years is that you need this bottom-up approach that countries, you know, let's get back to this this picture here, that a country like France, who is, you know, they, they are like the, the second largest economic power in Europe, they have to band together with Netherlands, with Sweden, with Poland, uh, with Italy, you know, the, the, here, the, here, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, they need to band together in order to make a block so that they can fight against the political influence that comes out of Belgium, Germany, and Austria. So this, this, this would be a suboptimal uh, way of doing things. So I really hope that they will come up with a uh, better option. So that's where there is also a call to action in this video. Uh, we Planet has a petition against these nominations. Uh, let me show you. It's over here. We Planet stop the anti-nuclear EU Commission appointments. The European Union's clean energy future is under threat as the potential appointments of two anti-nuclear commissioners risk derailing progress towards clean energy goals. So if you're in the EU, if you live in Europe, uh, please make sure that you uh, that you go to the petition page of We Planet. I will make sure that the link is in the description down below. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. If you're still here, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to support me, please go to my Patreon uh, channel and become a member there. Now, thank you all for watching. I made a strong force be with you. Bye-bye.